Hey everyone, welcome to More Than Meets These Guys. This podcast is a journey through Transformers from the beginning of the anime series with two old friends coming at it from different perspectives. Together, we will go episode by episode with the occasional extra to look at how the show holds up or if it's a trap of nostalgia. We'll be looking at all things involved in the episode, whether they were real world factors that crept into the writing or if the episode was typical afternoon cartoon fodder. I'm Evan, I'm the lifelong fan. I'm pretty much familiar with all things uh, relevant to the franchise and the fandom. Well, Ed, it was never something he uh, really, you know, related to growing up, but he was aware of its, you know, its appeal. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, man, Ed, what's going on today? All right, so I got some bad news uh, today. Oh. Well, for, for you for for you guys anyway not for me but because today we're no longer a transformers podcast but instead today we are a world cup podcast soccer podcast uh because I, and i'm gonna recap every second of this tournament so just sit back and i'm gonna talk about every uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm totally kidding uh, <laughs> I, I did i did have the bug uh this year or this uh, time around and yeah. i did watch almost every match um i woke up early today to get ready for the uh for the finals and generally the world cup finals are, are a little dull because uh both teams generally play very conservatively uh because mm -hmm. they, they don't want to be the first one to uh to make a mistake and um uh, uh instead i got to see an absolutely amazing uh, match today i was i was actually like uh, once it was done i was like i'm done for the day today i'm going to go to bed <laughs> um uh, great, yeah um i actually had to edit uh this thing that i wrote here because uh, i started writing it during the during the match uh, my entry uh, while i was watching it and um uh, you know for the first 75 minutes it was two nothing argentina and i was like well i guess france is gonna implode uh this is no good and uh and then mbappe scores twice in 90 seconds at about uh 80 minutes in and or 75 minutes or yeah it was uh, 90 uh and yeah about 80 minutes and uh double overtime and then the penalty kicks and it was uh it was fantastic um i, I don't like i yeah i don't like argentina because i think they played dirty uh soccer but uh it was very very good um so uh, but, uh let me ask man uh since i, I didn't watch because i've been doing mm -hmm. things all morning um who won Argentina. Or, I yeah, know Argentina. that. Yeah, I know that Brazil and Argentina are really storied franchises as far as uh, World Cup um, football as it as it goes. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't really get into it that much. Every so often, I watch things things with the World Cup. So I, you know, this year I really wasn't all that invested. So that's kind of cool to hear. Yeah, it was uh, it was very cool, uh, and I had uh, I had a blast watching. Uh, good due to my work schedule, I was able to pretty much watch uh, at, at, at least in the background, pretty much watch almost every game this year. So it was uh, it was very being, good. And um, being, being that most of the uh, play, the matches are obviously played flip flop for us for our, our schedules, so I actually mm -hmm. worked out well for you. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah, and I got to and because my uh, my do, do my streaming services i have peacock and uh, they showed the entire thing but only in spanish so i watched every uh every match in spanish which is the the, the best way to watch so, yeah. Dude, so the, the announcer would he would do that thing for like a minute and then stop and then do it again he'd take a breath yeah. and do it again and that it was, was one of my favorite was, things it was great. oh it was, it was so good it was so good so uh and uh you know the the, the match today was three three in the end so i got to hear that six times which is very cool um <laughs> but uh being ready for the holidays um yeah. Uh, non yeah non denominational holidays so um yeah we have uh you know we got some traditions for that uh so like uh right after thanksgiving my wife is just raring to go for christmas she loves christmas and she's just she's she's ready for it um my wife's she's very excited like... yeah uh, yeah it, it, it which is which is fine it's just cool but um yeah. she would go i swear to god she would go shopping for a tree after thanksgiving dinner she would if it were up to her she'd be like all right well let's that was we had the pie Back it up. And let, let's uh let's let's go get the suv and let's uh, let's do this so um but it's, instead we usually i i uh, usually able to hold her off until the you know the weekend you know the weekend you know the saturday and sunday so we usually go then yeah. and uh but then you know uh a, a, a very odd tradition that we have is that uh that weekend when we're decorating the tree we always watch indiana jones and the temple of doom while we're decorating the tree that's that's the um, unusual one man i, I like it, that. it is yeah I, I i don't know how it started uh yeah. but you can go back through the years of our pictures and you can see there's a, you know for going back 10 years there's a, pictures of us decorating the tree and you can look in the background and there's like mola rom ripping to do something <laughs> on tv or there's uh you know there's um there's like snakes, fortune snakes cookies. right you can see yeah. that it's just pretty cool um <laughs> My son doesn't really like the Indiana Jones movies historically until, but for some reason this year, he finally engaged with it. And he was like, dad, this is pretty cool. And I'm like, 
I know. I know it would be cool. <laughs> like, you're like, it's like going, movies, yes, like, got him on board. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. So, uh, it's like, yeah, man, this... what, uh, what about you, man? You guys have any, uh, you guys have any weird traditions? Uh, um, I don't, know. I don't know if they're weird though. I'm so, uh, actually, the, to bleed off what you were talking about, this year, my, uh, my wife has decided she wants to watch Die Hard. We've watched it twice now. And, uh, I, I love it. I, I never, I, I, my wife is, um, she's very particular. If I want to get her to watch something, I'll mention it and I have to back off because if I keep mentioning it, she goes the other direction. Like, nope, no, I'm not going to do it now. So um, I have to like, you know, ease in or oh, yeah. let her come do it on her own. And this year, this year she's, she's done it. And it's been great. Um, I, I haven't watched that movie in a while. I know you watch it every Christmas season. So, you know, this is the best American action movie, as you say. I, yeah. I watch it every uh, every Christmas morning, actually, because uh, I wake up before everybody else, and so yeah. I, I wake up and uh, and I make coffee and I sit in, and I have this quiet time. It's like the quiet before the storm, where I get to sit in front of the of the tree with nice. the presents and put the last minute gifts out, and uh, yeah, and then and I watch Die and I have Die Hard on. But alternately, <laughs> I'll, I'll sometimes uh, I will do uh, Lethal Weapon instead. Um, yeah, that's one I haven't watched um, in a while either. Yeah, so, yeah. or or, or sometimes sometimes both, depending on how early I get up, sometimes Ooh. both. Sometimes I get, uh, sometimes I get both. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. um, we we've uh, I don't know. For me, uh, we never really had strong traditions. Um, and you, I was talking to you earlier. You're going to go to Bellingrath Gardens uh, this evening, so that kind of reminded me. That was something when I lived down there. We would try to go to Bellingrath Gardens, and it was always a fiasco because it's hard to get in there because there's one road going in there. Right. It's yeah. a beautiful gardens area, and they they do some of um, I don't know. It's almost corny, but it's also really in in like uh, not, I don't know. Corny is not the right word. It's almost um, you know overdone in a way but some some of the areas there are just really nicely done they so many lights up and it's just it's not really changing every year but in a way i like it you know the way it is they so. pretty much do the same thing every year Th those of uh, those of you who are not from the uh, the u.s south um uh Bellagard gardens is a uh, like an old plantation house uh mm -hmm. in alabama um but every year they have they have gardens and and like a botanical thing or whatever um but every year they do christmas lights and they do it, it's just thousands and thousands of lights it's um unbelievable yeah uh but um but that uh going there actually led to uh, like a sort of a christmas in joke with my family that has somehow bled over to other families now uh of the christmas oh. squid the christmas squid oh yeah uh, cuz exactly um, so, yeah, yeah so so you have this um you know when you go to this plantation there's everything's kind of cordoned off into areas like, like there's a an area that's where they make have like toys made out of uh, christmas lights like traditional like jack in the boxes and toy soldiers and not, not like transformers or anything cool but you know like <laughs> wooden, cool wooden, wooden, way. Wooden toy, yeah wooden toys so uh yeah um you know they'll have that kind of thing uh there'll be like an area that's uh like, like uh coca-cola uh polar bears or well they or, actually you know, snacks or whatever but um there, but there's there's one that's uh like a next to the lake is like an undersea thing and there's like fish and starfish but at the end there's a giant squid made out of christmas lights and uh, i thought it was the funniest thing years ago and i was i took a picture with my kids in front of it and we're like haha a squid and i posted it on social media and my mom was like what is the deal with the squid at christmas and i just off the cuff made up the story about uh, a christmas squid and she's like I was like, yeah, it was the Christmas squid, you know, the time years and years ago when th there was no ink for Christmas cards. So the, the Christmas squid came out and made ink for everybody so everyone could send out Christmas cards. And, and so it's become like a, like a thing. And uh, um, but like the, a couple of years ago, you know, we usually go with some friends of the family like um, and uh, uh, last year, year before last, we went, my uh, uh, my friend's sister was down from uh, uh, New Jersey and or Maryland, I'm sorry, Maryland, Baltimore. Uh, they were not from Baltimore, and um, they uh, they they went, and I was like, oh, cool, we get to see the Christmas squid, ha ha. And she was like, what is the Christmas squid? And I told <laughs> the story, and she thought it was the funniest thing on the face of the earth, and was just like running to get the Christmas squid. So uh, we're going with them again. Uh, this, uh, Very cool uh, today. So, uh, so yeah. yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, honestly, we um, we really don't have any um, you know, traditional religious implications. To me. Uh, the Christmas season has always been about, you know, family and friends being together, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, being, uh, I don't know, better to each other than we can be sometimes. And, uh, yeah. you know, so I enjoy that. So, yeah, um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve, um, my my wife uh, always, always had the kids, they get, you know, get pajamas. 
we get popcorn and we get a movie and they sit around, they watch a movie Christmas Eve all together. And it's just one of those things where everyone gathers around and, you know, is, is together. So and that, and that, I can't fault that at all. It's actually, it's a great tradition. So we've continued it um, even like to the point where we're giving our, you know, our kids huge onesies. So, uh, you know, oh, that, like, oh, yeah, those are comically fun. Uh, yeah, I yeah. love this. What, what do you want for Christmas this year, Evan? What are you, uh, what are you, uh, what are you angling for this year, man? Um, man, honestly, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm weird, man. I, I think as adults, we don't really, um, I don't know. We, we kind of get things for ourselves as we go. Oh, oh but, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, honestly, I just, this is, sounds really like corny and like made up, but I just want everyone to have a good Christmas. That's all I really want. You know, I want everyone to just be chill and have a good time and, you know, everyone oh. be happy with everything. That's just, I, Look behind me, dude. I I don't want for much of the things I uh. Yeah, fair, fair enough. <laughs> I've even like pulled things out of storage. It's like I get Christmas early, so um, yeah. I as long as everyone's happy and everyone's content, um, I'm pretty cool, man. I, I'm not. I'm pretty low on the ask side of things. But how about you? What do you want? Uh, well, today I found out that uh, Snoop Dogg's golden WWE championship belt has gone missing, and uh, I would really like it if that ended up at my house uh, for, for Christmas. Um, well, you ruined the surprise, alter- man. On it. Well, uh, well, that's, that's fine. That's still going to be cool. Alternately, <laughs> a, a Masterpiece sound wave would be very, would be very cool. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no for, for, for real, I, uh, I I want less things. I want, I, want to, I want people to come take things from me. I, I clean my head. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you what I don't want, though, is a, uh, I do not want uh, any Megadeth albums because I hate Megadeth, and I especially do not want uh, Countdown to Extinction. Ooh, on, oh, on, on, on yeah. vinyl. Oh, <laughs> oh, the return uh, of the return of that's the dual layered, man. I'm right there yeah. with you, and I'm right there with you. Yep. <laughs> so this is great. This is a direct sequel to the Ultimate Doom. It is, uh, and uh, so this one was written by uh, Reed Robbins and Peter Salas. I uh, can't find a whole lot on Peter Salas, but uh, Reed Robbins uh, worked on this. Um, Gobots, okay. uh, D- Defenders of the Earth, uh, S- Smurfs, Captain Planet. Um, primarily a composer, though he's uh, mainly does hmm. uh, themes, and um, he did he did a few uh, like a few uh, like Sonic and some other stuff. But he also did the theme for the Super Dave cartoon that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And buddy, I am tracking this down uh, like. I'm on vacation right now, and I'm gonna, my vacation is going to be me watching like nothing but Super Dave Carpenter. I feel like I, I saw that it was it was like really short lived. I don't know where, I don't know. I feel like I've seen it before, and I don't know where. So don't ask I, me where. I have, no, I have no idea. I'm I'm gonna track it. Down. I'm gonna have to track it down. Though. It's like it's like uh, it's up here in the uh, in the old uh, burned out you know crevices of my brain. See, that's weird though because like uh, Super Dave was one of those kind of like I don't want to say like an underground thing, but it was definitely like. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you knew, you knew. But if you didn't, then you know it's you know. Um, Super but, Dave Osborne. But you know the thing is, like, I was a kid. I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, thirteen, I guess, twelve, thirteen, and like mm-hmm. sneaking, like staying up late to watch Super Dave, and like I got it. I thought it was yeah. really funny. So I was like, do I need? Do I need a cartoon? Do I do, like? Do, like, who's that for? You know, like, for the uh, kids, man. It's probably actually for the for the kids, but it's probably written with like uh, some adult things that so they enjoy it too. I, don't know. I can only imagine. I mean, that's. I mean, it was really. It was. I always, I always love the end of uh, every episode of Super Dave. He like they they put a uh, mannequin like of him in like a rocket and like fire him into a wall. <laughs> Super Dave was so good. Oh god. Oh man. So uh, so anyway, uh, it's kind yeah. of uh, to extinction. Um, so yeah. Uh, I, I like this. You know, we're look. Uh, the narrator comes in immediately, which is great. Um, he tells us all everything was has happened in the ultimate doom and we're showing the earth it's looking pretty rough man all the destruction caused uh, by the failed plan by megatron you got autobots are there rebuilding <laughs> wheel jack's like come on guys come on Put it on. He's, he's he's videotaping them too he's got a camera there like filming yeah. them, rebuilding he's not he's not doing anything <laughs> no, um so that, that, narr- that, that narration did a better job conveying the story of ultimate doom than ultimate doom did in three episodes three it episodes. totally did it wrapped 15, up so i could, I could look down the ultimate doom and just listen to the narration like okay this happened so it, it was yeah that was that was great and, <laughs> and it and it had a, it had like an apocalyptic vibe it was like you saw all this like disruption on the earth rough. and stuff and like they didn't yeah they didn't convey that much in the show but um no i feel like um, in the in the episodes the ultimate doom you just like they're you know having this great time like on this um tropical beach and driving around and like oh here comes cyber trying again better destroy it this time or better knocking out orbit this time, but it wasn't. There wasn't really the sense of like a, of doom, 
the ultimate doom no less. Yeah, i mean i mean you, you saw some of that stuff from like the uh oh the tidal waves and the the earthquakes and that kind of stuff but i don't feel like they really conveyed like the like the, the end result man, of that like yeah, they didn't feel, like certain. cities wrecked and autobots were yeah man that was, that was <laughs> cool god um Somebody complains that they're taking too long and they're going to be here until the big dipper gets rusty. That's uh, yeah. Huffer yells at Braun, which by the way, there's Huffer. a second like there's two Brawns because they're um gears are yeah gears is uh miscolored as Braun, but uh yeah. So Huffer's like, yo gears, you better play a slab. We're going to be here till the end till the big dipper gets rusty. I, he's that guy. Like, he's like the really Hey Abbott guy from Princess uh, from uh from uh. I think I was really annoying. Uh... Oh God. For um, so, uh, are Gears and Huffer the same model, just with different, like a palette swap? Or... Um, no, you I don't, mean I don't know Braun? Who, I don't, Braun, yeah, I don't know who he, any of those guys are. If I had, like, if I had thought about it, I would have brought both here to show you. Uh, no, um, Braun's essentially like a Land Rover kind of thing, and Gears is, uh, okay, well, they're close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're, Bra- they're, like the, they're, they're like the mini cars, so they're like the penny racer size. Okay. Everyone has a tire on the back and gears has you know other stuff it was yeah so they're they're like basically suv style trucks both of them okay yeah Braun anyway. is the strongest transformer right is that uh, he accurate? is he is at this point yes he's right. little and strong okay. but uh yeah so <laughs> you get past all this it's kind of cool seeing uh you know iron has going in there they're dropping you know cement in little holes potholes i wish we'd have that here because we get, I, I have some places up in the country i could use that guy <laughs> um but yeah, they're they're like Optimus Prime's holding up an overpass and they're trying to weld it back in place and fix it. So it's kind of cool seeing the Autobots here actually. Okay, sorry, this is kind of on us too. We're going to help you rebuild. But we get back underwater to the Decepticon base, which is where this episode just gets perfect. So, so the, the, the ship, this is the, the ship again. It's didn't they, weren't that. Is that what they were flying last time? Oh, it, now um, it's back underwater, or they had another ship that they were. No, no, he built another ship. He built his okay. uh, Bucker Bonsai style ship, mm. which uh, blew up. Oh, and oh, by oh, the, that was the same ship. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay, um, yeah, I, I thought they just crashed it back in the same place, and they were like, "Well, <laughs> I guess we're <laughs> back where we were." Like, we well, back, yeah, so I guess well. it helps. Yeah. No, but the dude, uh, <laughs> this, this interaction though, like, oh god, Skywarp calls um, Rumble a uh, metallic <laughs> mini meatball. Metallic mini meatball, dude. And so he's gonna step on him and rumble hits back with you and what army dude this was dude oh my god rumble, oh. rumble's, real, rumble's real tiny here too he got real small it's real, real small he calls, he calls skywarp a you maxi turkey which maxi i was like what is i thought he called him a nazi turkey i was realizing oh this is bad this is not age well no we call him a maxi turkey um and i'm like what is a maxi turkey so my my wife goes and she's like i'm gonna find out because she's watching with me so she had to go basically find out. It's something like the crypto bros use a lot. Um, basically means huge, maxi. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's just like you big turkey. He oh, couldn't okay. say big. He has to say maxi, but maxi. I, I don't know. That, make, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So the Decepticons are just like arguing and fighting each other. And then uh, like fr- like frenzy shows up, and then he doesn't want to yeah. do geek work. But then uh, one of the one of the seekers tells him that. Uh, a geek work is made for a geek like you this is just this is just, everyone's a high school bully here like yeah everyone, everyone. the best part is like um rumble and the frenzy start fighting with the seekers rumble jumps on like skyrope's head starts punching him it's the best thing and he falls over like, rumble's just oh. punching punching dude he's like a chihuahua he has no fear he's like, uh, like he's good yeah dude and, Get him, squiggy. Here, here comes megatron though Meg- megatron comes in and like everyone thinks he's dead and it, it, he he comes back in like Snake Plissken, like oh, like I thought you were dead, Snake. Uh, but so this is like when like you know like you had a substitute teacher for the, most of the day, and all the kids are just out of control and going crazy. And then like you know two hours in, like the real teacher shows up, and yeah, and, you know, everybody's like, oh oh my god. Okay. And then like you look, look like heads. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this is, yeah, this was that, or like when you you know you you think your boss is on vacation, and, and so everyone's like watching the World Cup at work, and then they comes. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, like minimizing windows so. yeah yeah um, uh, yeah then like he comes in and i uh, says no no i'm i'm indestructible you can't you know destroy me and laser beak is at the door and just you know i i don't know why i assumed he wouldn't use the door like he does he's just like opens the door and he flies in and um i don't know it just seemed really weird but makes complete sense and uh jumps into uh um, egyptian lover and starts replaying uh the conversation with star scream and dr archiville Dude, he's snitching. He's totally, oh, he's totally snitching. comes in. He's dropping the dime on uh on yeah. Starscream. 
Get um, away with you, man. Dude, yeah, man, he's uh, yeah, this this guy is uh, yeah, he's sus, man. You don't want to you don't want to have him mm-hmm. around. He's a bad dude to have around. But um, uh, so Starscream's hanging out with Doctor Power Glove, and uh, mm-hmm. so Megatron is really mad about this and decides he's gonna crush the traitors. But I can't see anyone else that joined Starscream. It's just Starscream. He's the only and one. Doctor Archiville, he told Doctor Ar- 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 yeah, don't nice. listen to Starscream. He told him. Well, he told Starscream not to talk to him too. He's like, "Don't talk to those. You guys don't talk anymore. Yeah. I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys talking." Separate because he knew. Guys. He knew. Yeah, exactly. He's he, they're the two oh, guys yeah. in the back of the class who won't shut up. Sure, that's right. Um, yeah. So, but uh, especially when the substitutes there. Um, but see, the, the, something I noticed here though, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like there were there's a lot less Decepticons now. Like, yeah, I, well, I don't, I don't, because it was just like, okay, it's Megatron. On on the one side is Megatron, the Three Seekers. Soundwave and his progeny, and then on the yeah. other side, there's it, it was just Starscream, and like I, I feel like there there was a, are there more. Or Fletcher's there missing right now. Well, yeah, those guys are Rav- so minor. Ravage didn't uh, show up. Yeah, mm. and uh, yeah, it seems like there's a lot less, but I mean, really, um, Reflector and all his little clones always kind of like pad out the uh, numbers. So right. that's what it is. I can't think of anyone else that are really missing at this point. I mean, we're going to get some more characters coming in soon. Ravage doesn't show up in the episode at all, so there's that too. So at this point, were those the only toys that were out? Uh, um, as, as far as the Zepticons? I mean, was, was I don't, I don't know, honestly, at this point. I okay. feel like there was like a stagger. There's like the original that came out. I think actually mm-hmm. they came out very late 83, but mostly 84. And then I feel like there's right. like a series one, then series 1.5. But don't want me to that. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, so that was almost like, let's put out, you know, these guys. Because everyone, there's always going to be more um, heroic, like Autobots that got put out because um, people didn't think villains sold as well. And that was just, that's a well, common thing. Yeah. That was. Well, but yeah, that, that was uh, anything. I mean, like, yeah. like series one G.I. Joe was like, like G.I. Joe had like, I think like eight or ten dudes, but they had they had a tank, they had a jeep, they had a motorcycle, a jetpack, um, they had a missile launcher, a flat mm-hmm. cannon. Um, oh yeah, the I, think, I think I think something. Yeah, th- uh, yeah, I think something else. But then like Cobra literally had three dudes. It was just three. It was three guys. That was all they had. It was uh, it was one. like of course it was Cobra Commander. It was Destro. No, no, it wasn't. It was it was it was Cobra Commander, mm-hmm. Cobra Officer, Cobra Trooper. That was it. That was all they had. I they love. Had I'll tell you. I low key love the Cobra uh, Officer. The the, the look Officer. is just very. Yeah, it's very utilitarian, but it looks so good. Anyways, uh, yeah, no. well, I mean, he's a he's a Hugo Boss style Nazi, and uh, those are that's, that's, that's a, sharp, a sharp looking it, uniform. It is a very I, sharp yeah. looking, they, yeah. Much as I hate, I hate a Nazi, but sharp, but it looks really snazzy, sharp. Snazzy dresser. So, uh. <laughs> but this is great though. Starscream and Doctor Archiville are uh, they arrive at Doctor Archiville's lab. This and place so, is uh, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this place is just like, dude. Oh my god, it's, it's on the so, side of a mountain somewhere in the desert. Obviously, and probably still in eastern Oregon somewhere or Washington State. Yeah, the Badlands. So, who knows where? Who knows where this is? You've got to give the password to get in, which is, as I quote, "I, Doctor Archiville, genius of science, <laughs> open says me." Dude, I was laughing so hard at this because oh, it was God. like he was because he explains that he has to activate the the password, and then Star Scream's like, well, "Why don't you activate your mouth?" <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's I'm so working sad. on it, man. I'm working on it. So this was like the the, the proto uh, scene from like Lord of the Rings, where them opening the door, the dwarf <laughs> door here. Like they had to, he had to say the right word. And except um, the dwarf doesn't take the door off and throw it down the cliff. Now oh I'm gonna do that to you too if you you know speak back to me. It's so, so but it was so funny because I was like open sesame. That, that that was that was the password it was like, open sesame. But then Take like the but Starscream calls him out on it. He's like, "Oh, how how clever, oh, how original, how original!" I was like, "Wow, at least they uh, at least they're in on the joke." From, that was pretty from cool. one narcissist to another. That's yeah, exactly. Oh god, that was so. This that scene was great. Um, yeah. <laughs> god, it was so funny. So we find the MacGuffin of the episode inside the lab, the exponential generator, which means nothing. Oh, yeah, but, absolutely, absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's it sounds it's really cool, techy sounding science stuff. An exponential generator, the ultimate power source. And basically, all an exponential generator it says is it's constantly making energy. It's kind of like how they just they just um created actual nuclear nuclear fusion, which 
has a net gain instead of a net loss in those particular right. nuclear waste. So he basically made a nuclear nuclear excuse me fusion generator. Nuclear. Just, nuclear. Nuclear. No, no, <laughs> not, not W. I'm not doing that. Nuclear. Uh, and so yeah, <laughs> so they they jump back here to um uh to like the, the Autobots. Um, some crazy jump cuts here though. It's like uh so. Yeah. The, they they cut to the uh, the Autobots are, are going. The Decepticons attack the Autobot convoy, no pun intended. Um, but they're like like, like ooh, see, I'm throwing the Japanese terms around. I'm learning about this franchise. Here. Um, yeah. Uh, so so like the Decepticons attack and they shoot some missiles and you see one coming down and it blows up and then they just cut right back to Starscream talking about this generator. I'm like it's a lot like, going on, man. Way to pace that action scene there, like. Uh, yeah, that was that was real. That was real weird. Um, yeah, I, and I like it though. Like this whole this whole time where between this cut, Starscream has constructed a um, a timer to make the the generator overload. <laughs> like all you see though is him like with a screwdriver yeah. and he's like screwing this thing into the wall and he's all like, ah, modified your thing. And like <laughs> you turn, oh, you turned a screw. Oh, that was awesome, man. What a god, what a genius brain genius you are. Um, yeah, he's cranked it up to infinite capacity. He turned it to 11. In, in, and eight hours is going to go to 11, man. He did turn it, he did turn it to 11. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Starscream's going to just going to destroy the Earth. This guy has zero foresight uh, here. He's like, like, man, maybe you should care about the environment, Starscream, because you live in an environment. Um, yeah. Um, he can live in deep space. He's fine. I guess he can live in deep space. Yeah. yeah. he can. Yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, there's this... Um, this is a great scene where the the Decepticons are like realizing they have to go down and face the Autobots and deal with them. So they they're all flying down and there's a scene where Megatron is like creeping up on Optimus Prime and he oh, jumps yeah, on and gives puts him in a lock. He does, yeah, he's, yeah. It, it's uh, a <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was hilarious. Um, yeah, man, uh, Optimus Prime's yelling out to all of his guys to transform because as he has to do at least once an episode because that's he did, like solution. a lot in this episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, his, his dialogue was real kind of weird though in this one. He was, uh, it was, it was bizarre. But um, uh, yeah, so Megatron snuck up on Optimus Prime, and they have a big fight. Uh, it was a pretty cool fight. Um, yeah. Optimus Prime, yeah, he hits a belly to belly suplex. Uh, points for that. Um, big fan of uh, early uh, Scott Steiner, so I was on that. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of weirdness in this fight though, where um, they would cut to Optimus Prime's face for a second, and you're expecting him to have like a line like a punch-up line here a quip yeah but they didn't like they didn't script anything so it just cuts to him to his face for a second and he, it's like he's pondering the fight but which is fun but it's funny because you know he doesn't have a terribly expressive face he just has a, that he has a shield over mm -hmm. where like a mouth would be and then just eyes and it's just kind of him just kind of looking at it it was almost like it was like one of those weird non sequiturs like you'd expect to have seen in like space goes coast to coast or something like that when they would just cut to like <laughs> like Moltar for a second he would just be like staring that, that, at, like that, know, that, that really with a switch like uh, a was, shrill was, sound <laughs> right yeah yeah Zorak yeah uh, Zorak just sitting there you know he's not saying anything he's just sitting there on, at the keyboard and but they make a joke about like you know how much it costs to animate him or something like that you know so yeah. Uh, <laughs> um yeah uh, I love this show. Oh yeah, she was so good. Um, yeah, that was that was that was bizarre though. Um, that was a, it was a weird thing where they it's like and, like ah kind of we could have written something here. Maybe. Yeah, Megatron like he he says fall back to Subdegons. These Autobots are two hero programs and no one to quit. Basically, like, they kicked her butts. Let's get out of here, guys. Right, um, right. Blame it on the blame it on the Autobots though. Blame it on them. Yeah. So. Yeah, now we're back on Cybertron with uh, Starscream shows up and your buddy uh, Shockwave is there. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, he doesn't want to let Dr. Power Glove in, though. He has orders from Megatron to not let to not let Dr. Power Glove in the Cybertron, period. Like, this guy's a, this guy's a, a speciesist. Or oh, yeah. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what's going on here. But um, a really fun glitch in the uh, on the uh, subtitles here was um, uh, Shockwave says, this creature is not allowed here. And but the subtitles say that this Rachel is not allowed in here. So like uh, Jennifer Anderson cannot go to Cybertron. She's not. She's explicitly excluded from, from Cybertron. Um, uh, <laughs> so I wish I watched the the uh, subtitles on now. I always watch the subtitles on. Uh, always. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny stuff. Um, so Starscream has all of Cybertron booby trapped. Uh, so if anyone uses anything and they're not a Decepticon. I don't know if they have different programming or if they have different circuitry or oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, like they, they, you get this kind of feedback thing, and um, 
and he gets like zapped by the computer when he's trying to turn it. Doctor, yeah, it was uh, what do you call it? It was uh, some like I don't know, some century program or whatever. Right, right. It's like, oh, you didn't realize we have a century program. If I have it on, it's gonna. I don't know. He got totally Destroy zapped, him? man. Yeah, he yeah. got totally zapped. Um, yeah, which was uh, and like like you assume that he's just dead because he's like that was a it's a full blown like. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was but the thing is i actually kind of like this is one of those redeeming moments where he's like all right look you know if i can't save the earth at least i'm gonna you know kind of hose you and so you can't get the uh power from it and you know he's like well you know he realizes he gets he's zapped and he's out of it he's done um we assume he's either dead or he's really hurt but wait a second back on earth oh man the, the decepticons lead the Autobots into one of the most fearsome tropes of our childhood. Well, which... first of all, this place is well, first of all, this place is called the Valley of No Return. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Like, 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 yeah, like yeah, right. Like, well, which, so, I don't, I'm not going there. Which, by um, the way, we're we've been watching uh, my, my wife in the morning. She loves watching um, uh, Portland area news. And there is a uh, pass in Eastern Oregon called Dead or No, yeah, Dead Man's Pass. Why? Why would you? Why would you drive through there? Like, yeah, let's not go there. Um, yeah, but there was it was busy. There was traffic going through there. Anyway, oh, no, I'd go the I'd, I'd go the other way. Yeah, pretty um, much. Oh, Anyways, my God, these, these, these dudes are caught in quicksand, and uh, oh, this is great. They're sinking, and you're like, man, oh my God, the ultimate, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate villain trap, or the ultimate uh, yeah. natural hazard back in the eighties is quicksand. Um, but they had like some metal scorpions in here to. <laughs> that, would have, that would have just been the trip the, the defective there Megatron, um, he pulls a uh do, a dr evil thing where he just leaves one century laser beak hey why was he in so much of a hurry because he's got to get to the lab man he knows what's up dude no he leaves a laser beak of all people there like why do you leave a laser beak like 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 this guy's he's real good at snitching every now and then he's got the cool laser beams um he's got the you know every now and then he has something cool yeah. like that but like like man you really should have left like I don't know, man. Like I felt like Thundercracker, like Skywarp should have, should have stayed, should have stayed there. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, but then again, he uh, Laser Beak does a good job. He's like, all right, no, 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 you're not getting out of this. So he goes and try, tries shooting him, but Mirage shoots a missile, knocks him out of the air, makes him transform to a tape, and Jazz catches him because, of course, he does. Dude, He's like, dude, got so, it. <laughs> so, so Jazz gets this, and uh, and he, he does some. Some Scatman Carruthers uh, beboppy talk here, and he's like, uh, "Like, hey, Optimus, you want to hear the number one hit single on the Decepticon cassette charts?" And dude, <laughs> lay it on me, man. Dude, Optimus Prime. <laughs> Optimus Prime. <laughs> as as the humans say, lay it on me, man. On, dude, this is like in, in, in like like those. There's this period of comedy of like comedy movies from like the late 90s all the way to the like the late 2000s where every th every time there had to be like a random like crusty old person that would rap out of the blue you know yeah. and everyone and, and like like normals thought it was the funniest thing on the face of the earth but like this grandma is rapping she's doing she's ra doing rapper's delight oh this is so funny and like this is <laughs> that, that's the uh, that is like Y'all can hate on me all you want. That's the opposite of funny. That's the least funny yeah, trope of all it's time. Crazy, and, uh, dude. Oh, and Optimus Prime doing this was like, God. It was like, oh man, this was like, <laughs> this is like some fifty-five-year-old dude in like Dockers, like, uh, like coming up and like, what's the haps, brothers? Or how's it going, fellow kid? How's it going, fellow youths? How, how's it? Yeah, exactly. Dude. How's dude. it hanging, everyone? God, like. I heard but, that's uh, really hip, you guys. Like, oh, yeah. dude, Optimus, Optimus Prime, man. Uh, being oh, cool is not Optimus Prime's forte, man. Leave that. Oh, leave no. being cool to 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 jazz. jazz. To jazz. Yeah. Jazz is jazz is cool. Um, I gotta say though, uh, before this, uh, there was a, there was a moment. For pardon me, while I move my camera by accident. There's a moment there where, um, once again, Ironhide is the. I don't, I'm kind of thinking Ironhide is the MVP of the Autobots. He uh, checks for seismic. He has a seismograph in his CRT chest. He uh, has liquid cooled nitrogen. When you need it. I mean, he he's kind of like the. I mean, he he lays cement and potholes at the beginning of this episode. He does it all, man. He's he's yeah. He's he froze like, the he froze the quicksand. That was a pretty uh, pretty novel way to to escape quicksand. I'd never seen that before, and I thought that was pretty cool. Well, considering quicksand essentially isn't supposed to be like a, a water mix with yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah, so I mean, it, made, I mean, no, it makes sense. And it was, we've uh, encountered it, so we know this because, you know, we yeah. obviously have countered it. 
Uh, so yeah, anyways, so back to this. Um, <laughs> you would say, lay it on me, man. Um, so the Decepticons get to the lab first and start realizing the exponential generator is the source's ultimate power. So there's a uh, there's a, a fun part here where um, the uh, Decepticons find out that the Autobots have escaped from the the quicksand, and um, <laughs> and somebody's like, like the auto uh, like like somebody says something like uh, the Autobots escaped their doom, and there was a, somebody else goes like Thundercracker. They they've undoomed themselves. <laughs> no, no, like, Thundercracker. He, this is the quote. I had to write this down. Don't worry. Will make them regret undooming themselves. Undooming themselves. <laughs> Dude, that's what's going. That's going above vocabulary forever. There, there's there's um, this little, really like um tender scene with uh Megatron when he looks at the exponential generator. He goes, "Your destiny does is to serve me, my potent beauty." Yeah, man. Yeah, he, he really uh, really liked. He really liked that. Uh, thing. Yeah. Later on, he gets really. He's into this thing, man. He's watching it. He's like, he's falling for this exponential generator. Yeah, well, he holds it so close and so long later on that he melts himself yeah. with it. Yeah, we'll get to that, though. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the, there's this great thing where the uh, the uh, subcons walk out of the lab and Megatron's, like, looking around. He, he stops for a second, looks like like he's looking at something in the distance, and that fist, Optimus Prime's fist, hello again. That's <laughs> <laughs> the greatest thing. So it's like, where was he hiding? He's like, creeping oh, behind a rock. Was- here he's there. Here, right, he's there. Boom! Oh, it was so, it was so good. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So Megatron ends up on the side of the mountain and he picks up a boulder and throws it at him and he's like, <laughs> have "Here, a ton of fun. Have, a, have a ton of fun." And so, like, this gets comedic here. Like, Optimus Prime <laughs> dodges and he he hits Rumble with it instead. And then like, like this Prime turns around and just <laughs> laughs at Rumble, but then he just stops. It was just like, ha ha ha. <laughs> it was like it was like you just played like laugh dot wave and, uh, and it was, it was the end. um dude oh god this fight was great um there, there's a cut though here real quick we go back to cybertron though we're star screen <laughs> it's, it's leaning over dr archerville dr power glove he's like uh he, um what does it say like he basically sorry uh my metacroids uh did as good as they could and you see, like, Cyborg Power Glove on the slab, pretty much. Yeah, and he, he's real mad. He, he's mad about it, too. He's like, you turned me into a mechanical monstrosity. I'm like, bro, yeah. you already had a Cyborg arm. What's, what's, you got, now you got into the brain casing, man. He was, uh, yeah. he was good. He he's in my direction. Stuff. Maybe it's like he wanted to do it himself. He's like, all right, this is my choice. My body, my choice. He, he wants to be a cyborg on his own terms. Those were yeah. not his terms. Like Starscream does not know about yeah. consent, and, and uh, yeah. so I, I, so Starscream is no friend of mine. Um, yeah. So uh, Starscream got real mad here that there's no explosions, and uh, same, buddy, same. Yeah, I, I I say that line to myself every day when I walk outside. There's God, why are there any explosions? Well, wait, wait till we eventually get to the Michael Bay movies. The explosions everywhere. <laughs> there's a lot of it. There's a lot of yeah. explosions in those. But uh, um, so, yeah, we cut back to Earth though, in the in the lab. And uh, um, Optimus runs in there. He's like checking out the uh, the generator, and Megatron shows back up. And he like he's getting getting ready to shoot at him. He's like, "You wouldn't shoot me in front of the uh, the generator, would you?" And this is the best thing ever because of what just happened. Uh, so he goes, "I always hit what I aim for, Prime." I'm like, "Dude, he just missed him the last scene. He threw a rock and hit Rumble and, 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 hit, his own, and, hit, and hit his own guy." Yeah. yeah. Um, this, this was actually kind of a cool little standoff here, though. I, I like this. Yeah. Um, you know, where weird. yeah, it was you know kind of mutually assured destruction that kind of thing, and they, they have they, they kind of brawl over this thing a little bit, and it looks like yeah. a football. So uh, I'm it like, I'm, yeah. Uh, um, Prime like strips it, like he, like he goes for like, like he gets the ball, and he's gonna he gets like a like a, a fumble, and he's gonna recover for the touchdown, and. Um, but- I gotta say, right before this though, there's this thing where Shockwave finally gets through to him. And he's like, Megatron, Megatron, are you there? He goes, Call back later. I'm busy. <laughs> like, new phone, who this? Yeah. Uh, Megatron also has like two lights in his chest that, that blink whenever someone's talking to him over his cell phone. Uh it was that was pretty cool. Um, which is which is kind of like that annoying guy when you go to the movie, it's always that one guy that has like the strobe light on his phone when he gets a text oh, and you're like, man. you just want to go fight that guy. Yeah. Um uh yeah so um so eventually the 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 generator is gonna overload it's gonna blow up and, and destroy the earth i guess is it like it's gonna yeah. wipe out like yeah. like all of earth and um 
we mentioned though like a few minutes ago about him like melting part of his like his chest and here's this weird uh, thing where megatron's staring at it and he goes uh it's like sorry i've been lost in my work he gets like he's just like zoned out and things like i'm so like, hypnotic yeah he was totally hypnotized by the thing yeah he was, it was yeah. like and like optimus tells him like it's it's you know unstable that's when the whole fight with the, the football happens mm-hmm. and it gets knocked in the ground and it starts going critical so there's this there's this uh, okay so if you uh, you know because we're i'm 12 years old he goes uh he goes no time to argue prime uh, no no time to argue prime load me and he transforms and puts the uh you know i was like ooh, that's a, that's a rough line he puts the uh he transforms and goes on to um you know where optimus prime you know is holding him loads the um generator into the barrel and shoots it best thing ever though is like starscream is flying back <laughs> He's like just like he's grumbling, he's pissed off because he's the only one who can make it back to the earth and find out what happened. And the generator goes past him and blows up. It just barely misses him. It barely misses him. And uh, dude, he was dude, he's yeah, he's free. He has no idea what's going on here. What what a shot though. Um, I I thought that was really cool. I, I am I'm a sucker yeah. for any time that the uh, that the good guy and the bad guys have to work together for a minute to you know to to achieve some other some greater goal than just fighting themselves. Um, yeah. I really I really like that. I I, I love it when. You know, when I was a kid, I loved it. Like when that would happen in X Men, when like they'd have to team up with like Magneto or, yeah. um, uh, you know, like I, I I love that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, when when they they put aside their you know the normal, but you know, uh, t- friction and tension, and you know, work, work together towards a goal. I think that's cool. Um, I like I like the scene a lot. I thought it was really great. And um, so uh, so yeah, um, yeah. There's there's a lot of um, a lot of after kind of like um, I don't I don't. Uh, retconning a lot of uh, things about you know uh, the Transformers um, characters, and I like the uh, I like the whole idea that you know Megatron and Optimus Prime really weren't that divergent at one point. They were had kind of more aligned goals, and it kind of split mm-hmm. as it went along. And um, I, the uh, IDW comics actually play to that a lot. Like Megatron realizes he ever of his ways after you know all these people have died or, or robots have died over the years. So I really, uh, I'm right there with you. I really like the idea of uh, these these two. Like, okay, we have different goals, but right now we have to work together. So yeah, I'm right there with you on that one. That was good. Yeah, that was cool. And uh, yeah, and then uh, the, the Autobots uh, <laughs> or uh, Starscream shows back up, and Megatron's real mad. He's gonna punish him. And... Welcome home, Noble Voyager. Oh yeah, he's, <laughs> man, he is mad at this dude. And uh, yeah, he's gonna he's the uh, Starscream's gonna go to detention or something. Um, and the Autobots like drive off making fun of him. They're like, like, I wouldn't want to be a star scream right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? He's just gonna get like put in time out, then go back uh, and be like, nothing. Yeah, nothing's gonna happen. Second right? in command. He gets, yeah, he's still gonna be second in command, For despite now. the fact that, despite the fact that we all know, star scream should be not star scream. Soundwave should be second in command. He really is the most reliable. Yeah, really he's the best. He's the best. He's he can do it all. He's the best. Yeah, Soundwaves, um, uh, Soundwave should be second in command, and the Shockwave should be, um, you know, really talk to him more. He's he has lonely, poor guy. That, yeah, that guy's like a good, good job. Yeah, yeah he, does, he does. He does. He does his job. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, man. Uh, that's that's the episode. This is kind of like the uh, the book end of Ultimate Doom, and mm-hmm. yeah, now actually watching it and talking to you about it uh, made me realize how much better this episode is than, um, you know a lot of the ultimate doom yeah it really was you know yeah. the, the pacing here was just out of control though it was just yeah, uh, like a longer like, episode it did um yeah it's a lot yeah they crammed a lot into this um but i think that this was a great wrap-up to ultimate doom mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. it's uh it's, it's kind of unfortunate uh, that it didn't follow it up directly in the in, in the sequencing mm-hmm. um I, I mean i guess we could have watched them in that order because it would have made more sense but i mean we're going off the you know off the hasbro uh uh sequences um Man, kid, I'm gonna be honest. Man, Kid Brain here loved this episode. I uh, like it, you know I, I got two Optimus Prime Megatron fights, um, which which was both of which were were pretty good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not, not, nothing's still gonna be the the one on the on the dam with the you know, with the with the yeah, axe and the, and the flail, but um, but dude, this was good. There was a lot of cool trash yeah. talking, a lot of weird trash talking. This um, I got I got a suplex, I got quicksand, <laughs> yeah, fun escape um and i got a cool wrap up to the multi-part episode um 
Skid rating here is going to go, man, I'm going to go four metallic mini meatballs out of five. Oh, um, nice. yeah, yeah, it was good. I liked it. Um, adult rating here didn't love this episode since it was sort of jerky from the, the pacing point of view. Like it was, it was kind of like, uh, kind of like a Space Mountain where like you ride Space Mountain, it's like, it, it's not a smooth roller coaster. It's a very jerky oh. roller coaster. I love it, but it's, 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 you know, there, there are, there are better coasters than that. Um, but uh, you know, but I did like it since it was, it was a lot of fun, and I, I laughed a lot at this one. Um, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give uh, adult ratings gonna go with three rusty big dippers. <laughs> that means, that's actually it's fair. By the way, I, I pulled out my uh, ri- my original um ma- the first masterpiece uh, Transformer they came out with. He's behind me. Uh, he's from the Black Zerac, uh, Optimus Prime is a uh, laser axe too. Oh, you know, he has that. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, of course he does. He's done it all, man. He's even got the Matrix. What uh yeah, so how about what how about you, man? What's your well, uh, what's your rating on this one? Yeah, okay. So I was laughing at it earlier and I was a little less on this until you and I started talking about it and just laughing about it. Um there is so much enjoyment from this episode. There's some really cringy dialogue and it's great. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it, but yeah, but but I, but I love it though. That they yeah. like it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's 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 fun dialogue and like and the fact that I'm blabbing blah, blah about it now is like uh, oh yeah, that's, 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 that's a good sign. Yeah. This is one of those episodes that everyone remembers as being one of the really good season ep- season one episodes. And so talking about and talking about it with you and uh, and uh, going back and like kind of reliving like the episode I haven't seen it in years. I'm uh, going to have to give this thing, you know, I, I hate to do this though, but I'm gonna, I, I'm not quite there at four. Not, it's better than three. I'm at three and a half exponential generators out of five. Ooh, okay. Okay. Uh, Cause I, I want to give it more, mm-hmm. but I feel like um, if I don't want to, sh- you know, shoot my shot right yet, because I think there's even better episodes, but uh, it's definitely not in the same category as the ultimate doom. So I got to give it a little extra. I hate to go 0.5s, but you know, I really don't have no, to. No, make no, a no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, gotta watch out, you gotta watch out for rating inflation, man. You don't want to. You don't want to give too many stars yeah. away. And uh, and, or, and uh, yeah, I, I can't start uh, giving it sixes and sevens because we're going to one to five, man. So uh, yeah, there there's a lot of great things on this episode. Uh, a lot of fun things, and um, really, there's a lot of uh, things I, I like. It's tropey in the ways you know, like the <laughs> open says me. Dude, um so, so funny but yeah you know you're right at the end of the episode i uh you know being you being someone who hasn't watched this a bunch of times like i have you really kind of you made me understand that uh the ending there with um them working together was much better than uh i remembered it so i gotta give it mm. to you. you you convinced me um so yeah i'd bring it up a little bit it was cool yeah, yeah it was it was definitely cool um yeah kind of um I don't know. Like yeah, like I said, I'm a sucker for that. I, I mean, like you know, yeah. like Gundam. Gundam did it. Yeah, oh, arguably yeah. did it better than anybody else. And uh, you know, I like that. So um, yeah, uh, but yeah. No, this was this was a fun one. I um, uh, I like yeah. Overall, I liked it a lot. Um, as an update though, I did. Uh, I was gifted some more of those uh, Transformers uh, Magic cards. Uh, oh really? My friend of mine. Yeah, I did. Man, I got. I gotta uh, get some of those. I got Blaster. Oh man, look at yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty cool. He's a foil. Uh, he's pretty yeah. cool. Um, I got uh, I got Ratchet nice um also, uh, not a foil but very cool i got oh mm, i got old star <laughs> stream yeah the old foil That's star nice. stream and uh i got this dude uh i don't know i don't know who ultra magnus is i don't know who uh, i don't you'll know see who him he in is. season three comes know, in the movie yeah. yeah he's uh, okay basically a city commander he looks like a like a uh, pilot swap optimus prime with some extra armor on him he looks like yeah. uh like a super valkyrie optimus prime he actually in a, in a lot of ways uh the from the from the diaclone um era he was he was called Powered Convoy, um, different colors, but um, he was basically a um, a exosuit for Optimus Prime or uh, convoy. Sorry, convoy. Uh, oh, you okay. hook the uh, the convoy trailer, Optimus Prime's, you know, the uh, the rig part of it, not the trailer, mm-hmm. the rig into the uh, thing and kind of wrap the whole trailer around him. So yeah, he was um, he was essentially in Transformers. He's repainted cab of the um, of the you know Peterbilt truck and okay. uh, the um, the car carrier part of it, kind of. Uh, close around him so yeah um he kind of was you could you could put optimus prime in the middle of that too it, it works the same way oh the figure itself is the is the same figure as, as optimus uh, prime, same then. figure but just painted uh white with uh like, okay. you know, teal accents a little bit of red but yeah same same care same uh same baseball oh, okay. yeah. that sounds pretty cool i'll have to, have to look him up yeah um, uh, 
so yeah yeah i right there with you man um or cool stuff i gotta find some of those cards and uh, start you know collecting a few of those just to have them i, I i'm the kind of guy who um i would want to have those put mm. them in the protection put them in a little frame and like you know mat them up on the wall because yeah you know, okay. yeah it's probably the better way to yeah yeah they're just sitting on my desk and sleeves right now like <laughs> with, uh, yeah with, with, a, with a bunch of other like i, I got really, a few years ago i got really big into um uh art cards like it's uh like a lot of artists will do these things where they'll do they'll, they have like blank trading cards they'll do sketches yeah and yeah. um yeah yeah a few, yeah, few guys um uh like oh i got um like dan uh, dan smith who did a bunch of art for uh the role-playing game gurps oh, yeah. um yeah, yeah i got uh one uh sketch he did of uh of green arrow no, it's really like cool. it's, it's cool because you know it's original art you know it's like it's an actual you know like, more like markers or pens or whatever so it's, yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a good cheap it's a good cheap way to support um you know support artists and get like a cool piece of original art so uh, yeah. yeah like i've got a, i've got a sketch of a uh, snake eyes from um oh god i'm what blinking on his name right now artist for gi joe um oh uh I, I don't, from what era i don't know um um uh, yeah, asian american um, oh, Larry, Larry Hama. Larry Hama. Yeah, Larry Hama. Oh, um, right on. Right on. I've got a, like a sketch of uh, Snake Eyes just like let loose with uh, you know submachine guns. Nice. Um, that kind of stuff is kind of cool. It, it doesn't mean a lot to him. You know, he can throw these these sketches right. out, but a little bunny gun going his way is kind of nice. Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, all the kind of stuff. Always, I always like to try to help. Um. You know, the creators who uh, mean a lot to me. I've got. Mm-hmm. I found my uh, my old um, book from Dan Gilvezon, who um who who um, voiced Bumblebee and also voiced uh, the uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man and the old Spider-Man is amazing friends cartoon. Um, he, he wrote a book basically like um, talking about his, you know, his you know, life voicing Bumblebee and how, what it means to him. And he's, you know, it signed it for my, uh, for my son. And oh, nice. uh, I think he realized it meant more to me, to me than uh, to my son. So uh, yeah, <laughs> he then took pictures <laughs> with me and stuff. It was really cool. He's a really nice guy. Um, nice. A lot of the voice actors are really cool. They were like, they'd oh. love to hear from fans. Uh, anyways, nice. so let's go ahead and cut it here, man. Um, yeah, we, we're I'm, we'll figure something out for um for Christmas uh, week, I'm sure, because you know, next next release will be uh the Tuesday after Christmas. We'll figure something out with that. Um, in the meantime, but uh, so, anyways, uh, I want to remind everyone that um, if you would like to get a hold of us, uh, Ed hates Transformers at gmail.com, more than meets these guys at gmail.com. Uh, we also have also started putting the correct link for the Discord in the show <laughs> notes after I was given a little quick lesson on Discord. Um, you know, I feel old, but it's working. I actually um, learned, I'm actually learning how to use Discord and it's actually not as bad as I thought it was. So, no, it's uh, like old style message boards in, yeah. like, in an app format. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to be a little more active in there, and uh, and everyone in there is super cool. Um, no, uh, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, that and that helps. Small yeah. community. Um, I know Danny's in there. I know uh, Tim, who I re- the email I read, is in there. Jess, who I uh, also re- um, mm-hmm. had her email, uh, talk about you know, the old times and like marking the different times of uh, funny events and the different episodes. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, old friends of mine who have been my my kind of like my online Transformers family for years, and uh, we'd like to get more people in there. So if you enjoy this. Uh, you can hang out, talk to us. It pushes on my phone, so I'll probably respond pretty quickly if you put something in there. Ed's learning how to use it. And he's kind of cool with it now. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, I, I've been really hesitant to do this, but um, kind of want to you know help you know get, get upgrade the apparatus a little bit. So I put a Patreon link in our show notes. So if you you know no requirement, you you know want to throw a few things our way. You know I'd like to get Ed his uh, microphone going on. You know, recoup recoup some uh, money from uh, doing the RSS feed and you know microphone and all that for me as well, but it's not requirement. We'll, we're still going to do the same stuff. Maybe we'll try to do some extra stuff on there as it goes. I I think we're also going to try to do uh, some like uh, like stickers or some cool stuff like that yeah. soon as well. So yeah, maybe uh, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, depending on on how that works out, if you get it on the, on the on the Patreon, I'm like yeah, again, not, like not like not required, but I mean, if, but you whatever. think you know um, you feel like but, you guys you know want to throw it tip our way pretty much yeah uh, you um, say like but if you don't want to it doesn't matter it will still hang out with you and talk to you and that kind of stuff um i'll say this also I, yeah we're talking about doing stickers we uh we're talking about i think ed you have an artist friend you're talking about maybe doing shirts or something in the future yeah I'm, uh, yeah i'm trying to get some uh some cool uh like assets done like that so we can yeah just have some yeah. cool stuff out there like like stickers and shirts and maybe i don't know do like a yeah teespring store or something like that but uh yeah, yeah. you you uh you 
uh, ladies and gentlemen and bots and anything in between. Um, you've gotten almost us almost to a thousand downloads uh by episode 12 here i'm I'm sure we're on like i think today i checked it was like 925 on episode 11 so nice. that's kind of crazy i mean this is a very niche thing one of my favorite words by the way niche it's a very niche thing and um i love that people are kind of discovering us but if you wouldn't mind if you like this a lot you know someone else who might like an old friend um an online friend whatever share a link be really cool. It's uh, it's you know, it's difficult building something from the ground up, but I think you know, Ed and us, Ed, Ed and I both have been enjoying doing it, and we've been really surprised and really in a very positive way the reaction we've been getting in the emails and the you know people chiming in. So please, I'd I'd like to hear from you. He'd like to hear from you. You know, we we'll we'll scream in the darkness. I don't care, <laughs> but it's kind of cool hearing the, the feedback. So, anyways, Ed, would you like to take us out today? I would because uh, in uh, in uh, observance of the weather in the season currently, I will say it's cold enough to freeze the ailerons off a titanium moose bot. <laughs> Dude, what's that from? Uh, it's a sideswipe from uh, Fire on the Mountain. Oh, okay, that's gonna be coming up. By the way, Fire in the Sky would be real soon, and then Fire on the Mountain. I can't wait for that. All right, well, cool. all right, man. All right, guys. So, all right. See you guys later. Thanks so much for being here. Bye. Later, guys.